In August 1978, an ore deposit was discovered in the upper reaches of the Abakan River. Geologists from a helicopter saw a vegetable garden with potatoes. Where is he from in desolate places? The nearest village on the river is 250 kilometers away. Having landed, they found people who lived in pre-Petrine times interspersed with the Stone Age. With a splinter without salt, bread. In 1982, Komsomolskaya Pravda journalist Vasily Peskov visited the hermits. The country was read by the lick of Rubinsonate. But there was a blank spot in the Tega impasse. Peskov traced the 300-year-old path of the old believer family, the Volga region, Altai, Siberia. Why did the family live in the wilds of Abakan all alone? Agafya's father Karpasipovich Likov spoke of those years dully, indistinctly, with apprehension, wrote Peskov. He made it clear it was not without blood. Nicholas I abolished the persecution of old believers. But a revolution broke out, then collectivization. Many old believers remained in the village and created an agricultural cartel. And the lick of brothers, Stepan, Karp and Evdikim, together with their father and three more families, moved to the upper reaches of the Abakan. They cut down five walled huts, hoping to survive the satanic times in the wilderness. Their village was called in the documents, Verkhanyaya Karhakskaya Zemka. The author of the book, Lykovs, Tigri Dolki, restored those traumatic events. His father, biologist Georgi Dalkit, was in charge of the scientific department of the Altai Nature Reserve. In 1930, by a decree of the Council of People's Commissars of the Rusfers, the Altai State Reserve was created. The hitch was on its territory. The authorities announced to the old believers that they were not allowed to live here, hunting and fishing were prohibited in the reserve. Projects scattered in all directions. Only Evdokim Likov was allowed to stay, Exinia's wife was expecting a child. In addition, he agreed to work in the conservation of the reserve. But there was an anonymous denunciation, they say, Likov is a poacher, he will kill all the animals. Officers Rusakov and Klistyanov were sent to check the signal. The brothers were digging potatoes, Karp came to help Evdokim, and did not immediately notice the armed men. Black riding breeches and tunics, black pointed helmets on their heads. This form was introduced in the reserve recently, the Lykovs did not know about it. The brothers rushed to the hut. Rusikov raised his rifle. Don't shoot, they don't seem to understand who we are. Shouted Klistinov. But he shot Evdokim in the back. The wound was fatal. To shield themselves, the guards drew up a protocol, accusing the Lykovs of armed resistance. Karp refused to sign the false paper. The murder was reported to the area. The investigation was carried out superficially, no one was tried. Eerie thirties. Shot means guilty. In 1937, the Angf raided the Lykovs. They asked in detail about the murder of Evdokim. Like, it was decided to look into this story again. Karp was alert. The murderers of a brother can slander him during the investigation. They have more faith. That is why he took his family to the desert, the upper reaches of the Bolshoi Abokan. Mountains, Tega, hundreds of kilometers without shelter and no roads. Here in August 1940, the observers of the reserve met him. They offered a job as a guard at the cordon. A large semi-detached house, a bathhouse, barns, government food. They promised to bring a cow and sheep. They said that their brother's killers had already been punished, it was a lie. The head of the science department of the Dolkaif Reserve, the father of the author of the book, also participated in the negotiations. Karp's wife really wanted to move to the cordon, closer to the people. Children are growing. But Karp was categorically against it. Let us perish, how many people have been ruined, for what? Evdokim was killed and we will be harassed. And he moved even further into the Tega. Fear of sharing the tragic fate of a brother shot before his eyes, the same blood. Which he later hinted at to Vasily Peskov, they drove the runner. Not fate at all. Soon the great patriotic war began. There was no time for a carp in the reserve. However, the Enk remembered him. 
By the end of the summer of 1941, the Czechists took control of all Taiga settlements. So that deserters do not hide there. A detachment of border guards and security officers went on a raid to search for the fugitives. Old believer Danila Molokov, an old acquaintance of Karp Asipovich, was taken as a guide. From the conversations of the Czechists, he understood that the head of the Likov family could easily be solved in the Tega. Karp noticed the detachment from a distance. And when Molokov fell behind, he called out to him. Danila said that a war had begun with the German, the Enk were looking for deserters. Karp Asipovich urgently took his family into the impenetrable jungle of the upper reaches of the Abokan. The same Tega dead end where the Hermit Agafya still lives. In 1946, a detachment of military surveyors stumbled upon a refuge. It was put on the cards with the Mark Zane Kalikov. Karp and Sun Savin led a detachment of cartographers across the pass. But, returning, the cautious Likov urgently moved higher into the mountains. To the alternate airfield, where for two years there was a covered log house in case of sudden relocation. Peskov described the story of the visit of cartographers in the Tega Dead End. But Vasily Mikhailovich did not know the continuation of this story. The cartographers, of course, reported to the authorities about the meeting with the hermits. They told about their extreme poverty, their three children, Agafya was just born. The head of the Altai Nature Reserve was summoned to the regional party committee and made a suggestion, all believers are hiding from him. Breaking the laws. The director proposed to relocate the Lykovs to the Abokan cordon, register Karp as a security guard, help the family. But the Bureau of the Regional Committee decided to send the Enkv to the Old Believers. In winter, the detachment went to the upper reaches of the Abokan. The Czechists hoped that the Lykovs would not run away until spring, they hoped to catch them by surprise. But the hut was empty. In the summer of 1947, the Enk Force Detachment made another secret raid over the Abokan area. It turned out that all the old believers who fled to the Tega from collectivization in the 30s sooner or later returned to the people. And nobody heard about the Lykovs, as if disappeared. It was clear that if we had found the Lykovs, the head of the family would have been in trouble, writes Dalpat. Who was the conductor of the Enk Detachment? Likov would have shared the fate of those who in those days dared to live differently. As it should have been. I mean that if he left the Tega, he would have been arrested and brought to trial. Gradually, they began to forget about the Lykovs in the reserve. And the Czechists also have other concerns. And so no one would have found out about the Lykovs, if not for the geologists on the helicopter. I also want to add a few words from myself. Studying the stories of Peskov and Dalkit. There are a lot of contradictions and suppression. One feels that both of them were subjected to harsh Soviet censorship. None of them writes the truth about the death of the family of Evdokim Likov. And this is very strange. In addition, studying the biography of Tigri Dalkit, who, in parallel with Peskov, described the history of the Likov family. We see that the writer worked as an employee of the reserve and in his narration in every possible way praises the leadership. Reserve of those years. That is, people who sent two murderers to Evdokim Likov, and then covered up their actions. Also, we see that Tigri Dalkit himself accompanied the Enkv workers who were looking for the Likov family for repression. Can Dalkit be trusted after that? Did he write the whole truth? You cannot definitely believe. It is also impossible to believe the story of Peskov, Tega Deadlock, which was edited by party censors. A big request to the viewers of our channel to write at least some information in the comments. About the death of Aksinia Lykova, Evdokim's wife, about the death of their children and about the death of the grandmother of these children. This whole family lived in a hut on the Cairo River. What happened to them? And why did an article appear in the local Altai newspaper in those years that Karp Likov himself killed his brother? Then only Peskov refuted this slander. Please share this video on your social networks, using the buttons under the video and subscribe to the channel. I ask you to go and watch other videos about Agafya Lykova, which you can see now on the screen in the end screen savers. There are a lot of rare and interesting facts about the Hermit. Thank you all for watching.